Question three. So two assumptions required for a binomial model. So hopefully most obvious thing to write down is that events are independent and, and also that the probability is going to remain the same. There we are. Okay, got to say two things because it's two marks and it sets two assumptions. Right, part B, using Petra's model, find the probability that H is more than or equal to four. Well, the easiest way to do this is one minus. Now, this is really where your calculator comes into its own. And it's much easier to do this if you do the cumulative value. All right, and that's really easy to set that out on your calculator. And if you're not sure, I suggest that you go and look at that. Um, you can do it straight from here, just doing four and then and then just have a high upper, upper limit. But this is much easier to do this here. Um, so and then we just go and work out that, those, uh, that value just there. And you should get 0 0.9872. So that equals 0 0.012795. Okay. Now, for each child, the random variable f represents the number of the throw of which the dart hits the target. Using Petra's assumption about this experiment, find... So in other words, they hit the target. Their first hit is number five. So what has to happen for that to happen? Well, that means I'm going to miss it, or the child's going to miss it, four times in a row. So the probability of the missing is 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9. So in other words, that's 0 0.9 to the power of 4. And then they hit it on the next go. So you just work that out. There we go. So that's going to be 0 0.06561. Just plug that into your calculator. Right. Now part D. Now part D, I'll be honest with you, first time I looked at this, I thought, ugh, that looks a little bit scary. Um, so let's just have a little think about what's going on here. So we're told something here that looks dreadful, right? You're sort of looking at that, your initial reaction is, right, I don't really like to look at this. Well, let's just set it out and think about what the probability is of each one. Now, there is something really important that it's actually told me just here. So imagine I'm going to get it, uh, I'm not sure which, let's just call that N. And there we go. Right, so we're going to have going from one, so we might hit it first go, second go, third go, and, and then you got up to 10. So the first one, so when n is one, that would just be one take, so that's gonna be zero there. So that'd just be 0 0.01, all right? And the only reason I'm doing this, I'm not too sure about where it's going. So I'm just trying to set it out and think about well, what, what's really happening. So the next one, would be 0 0.01 plus this alpha thing that we're trying to work out. And then the next one, I'm just plugging three into this, would give me 0 0.01 plus two alpha. And so on until the last one, which would give me 0 0.01 plus nine alpha. Now, something really important that it says Tom assumes that in this experiment, no child will need more than 10 throws. So that means that this must add up to one. All right, this must add up to one. Why is it told me this here? All right, that's really important. So these must add up to one. So if you add all of these up, that's going to give you, uh, so this plus this, we've got 10 of these, haven't we? So that's going to be 0 0.1. And then... Plus, so if you think about how many of these you've got, you've actually got 45 of them. And that's got to equal 1. Take away 0 0.1 from both sides. So 45 equals uh, 0 0.9. Divide by the 45. And we get this figure 1 over 50. Or uh, if you prefer to write it as a decimal. We've got 0 0.02. Okay, so part E, relatively straightforward. Okay, even if you couldn't do part D, you could do E, 
because, well, maybe you can't because obviously you don't know this bit here, do you? All right, but the, uh, this one here is just going to be plugging five in. But now we know what this figure is. So it's just going to be 0 0.01 plus four lots of 0 0.02. So if you work that out, you get 0 0.09. OK, and then the very last bit of the question. Explain how Petra's and Tom's models differ in describing the probability that our data is the target in this experiment. Well, for Petra, then the probability remains the same. But on Tom's model, it increases. Now, if you think about it, it's probably more likely to be the case, isn't it? All right, you know, because uh, you're going to get, hopefully, you're going to improve your chances as you kind of go through. So maybe that's a little bit more realistic.